So we're going to talk about um, keystone species. So this will go in your note packet for the definition of keystone species. So a keystone species is a species that has a big impact, even though it might have small numbers. So organisms can have big impacts, but a lot of times um, it might be just because they have large numbers in the ecosystem. With a keystone species, it's a little bit different. Keystone species, they have a big impact not because they have big numbers, but because of their role in that ecosystem. So a species that plays a far more important role in its community than its relative abundance might suggest. And typically if this species is removed, we see that it has a big impact on other species. And not just on a couple of species, on lots of different species. Just a reminder, I need your multiple choice um, chapter six for tomorrow. So these keystone species, well, there are different types, okay? They could be predators like wolves, okay, or orcas, um, or they could be mutualists. Right? We learned about mutualism yesterday, species that benefit each other. They could be ecosystem engineers. We'll talk about it on the next slide. But an ecosystem engineer is an engineer that helps create some of its habitat. So a species that creates or maintains habitat for other species. So we'll talk about beavers. Beaver, beavers are a good example because they create habitats for other aquatic organisms. So as you guys saw with that Pisaster starfish in that video, when we have the Pisaster um, in those ponds, we see that this number of species remains high. When we remove it, the species declines, right? The number of species, because it's the keystone. They talked about the keystone being the part of a bridge that holds everything together. So what are some examples then? All right, an alligator. You probably didn't know this, but alligators dig holes, okay? And during dry spells, they hold fresh water. So if you've ever been to the beach and you dug a hole in the beach, what happens to that hole? Fills up with water, right? Well, during the dry season, alligators do that. They dig these holes and they kind of fill up with water and it provides water for some other organisms and it provides habitat for them. So they're actually altering that ecosystem by doing that. The beaver. So the beaver builds dams. Okay. Uh, what it does is it uh, basically piles up a bunch of sticks to make its home, and then it creates little ponds. And those ponds or areas that are flooded from that beaver end up 
um, allowing other organisms to thrive there. So my mom actually got in a fight with a beaver, not an actual fight, although that'd be pretty cool. Um, my mom and my grandparents own a campground. And what happened is they have like, they have this lake here. And there's like, I don't know, there's like some little stream or river or something. So what happened is they couldn't figure out why the water level in their lake was so high. And they thought, well, maybe, you know, it's just like, I love it. We figured out that uh, there was a beaver in the floor building a dam, and it was preventing any of the water from like draining out of the lake. So this was like kind of like an area where it drained out. It's preventing all the water from draining out. So the beaver. How they do that is basically they eat a bunch of seeds. They bats and birds like eating seeds. When they eat those seeds, the seeds uh, aren't actually digested completely. And they end up pooping those seeds out. And when they poop them out, those seeds end up growing. And so they actually spread seeds around and they help create new forested areas. And then of course we have wolves. So wolves keep herbivores in check. And that's important because herbivores, things like deer or elk or, um, I mean not elk, gazelle, deer, gazelle, and those kind of species, um, they have a lot of herbivores in their diet. And they now I had a grass away and then all of a sudden we were dealing with erosion and other issues. So they want to make sure that that land stays intact. So those are just some examples of keystone species. Tomorrow we'll look at a video clip on wolves and then we'll talk about succession. For the rest of the class period, you need to use your phone or a computer. You just need to Google these species, figure out what their relationship is. Is it mutualism, parasitism, or commensalism? And explain why. So I just expect you to look all these up. So use Google, look them up, and then just write down why. If you could put your name on this, I didn't put a name spot on here. And then whenever you're done, you can turn it in. If you don't get it done and you need to finish it tomorrow, totally fine. You can give it to me. Um, tomorrow. Okay, remember multiple choice is due tomorrow as well.